Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and I recently had started an Instagram and I saw a question come through on there when I had uploaded a video of me doing some dips with a couple chains and the person had basically said that they're not familiar with anyone advocating single sets and I thought that was a really interesting question and I guess it goes to show that the current younger generation getting into lifting isn't aware that this has long been a point of contention in the training world not necessarily in the athletic world per se always but at least within the the general public uh, fitness world even the magazine world things like that uh, People have argued this point back and forth in every generation we go through a phase to where actual one set training becomes the only way to train. And if you don't train that way, then you're stupid, you're overtraining, blah, blah, blah. A bunch of nonsense is not necessarily true. And then it goes back and forth for a few years. It goes back to really high volume training that is probably too high for most people's needs who aren't on just tons of drugs. And then it goes back and forth. The pendulum swings back and forth. So let's discuss some of the prominent figures who've popularized one set training so that people can actually see this is a real deal a lot of big names in the industry over the years have advocated exactly this and they have successfully gotten tons of clients uh, to reach their goals doing this and there's a wide diversity of people involved uh, not just bodybuilders but there will be bodybuilders covered all right up first we have none other than the famous strength coach Bill Starr and that's really interesting that he needs to come up because a lot of people have accused me of stealing his 5x5 which I totally didn't to write my novice 5x5 because mine's actually a sets across system and one of the things you'll notice if you go to his mad cow system which should be detailed in his 1976 book the strong shall survive strength training for football and actually this book that he wrote not only helped high school and college level teams there were actual nfl players back in the day in the 70s and 80s running his programs out of this book and kicking ass on the field and i think that'll come as a surprise because a lot of people are like no his system is a five by five no not really it really isn't. Now, he also does triples and stuff towards the end of the week, but the Monday training is the five by fives. The thing is, you get heavier and heavier on each work set. And honestly, only about the fourth set is even heavy enough that you're actually finding that you're doing any work at all for the five rep set. And then the fifth rep set is your heaviest set. Your fifth set is actually your three rep set from Friday if you're running the program correctly on the big lifts. And it's the only true work set that's taken to close to failure. It might reach muscle failure. It's going to get really, really close. That is your only real work set. Everything else is actually just a warm up to help prime your nervous system for the final set the first three to four sets in it aren't actual real sets they would be classified as what most of us would call warm-up sets and most of you guys don't count your warm-up sets so really even his monday day is only three actual work sets it's one set of squat one set of bench one set of deadlift and then you know like wednesday and everything he does power cleans and everything but again the wednesday and friday workouts are only one real work set so he originated this and popularized it for professional athletes all the way in 1976. All right, fast forward to the 1980s, and then you have Mike Menzer, who lost the Mr. Olympia to Arnold Schwarzenegger. So by losing the Mr. Olympia to Arnold Schwarzenegger, Mike later decided to devise his own system based upon recovery, what he thought was recovery issues more than anything. And he's saying Arnold and all these guys did it wrong. They trained way too much, way more than they need to reach their goals or just wasting time in the gym. And Mike devised what was called hit or heavy duty training which consisted of one all-out set now he did also space them out probably way too far for most people's uh, liking who really understand exercise science because he believed in tons of time off from the gym but he was the first big major fitness industry figure to advocate doing one set and keep in mind he was a coach for a lot of bodybuilders he also was a writer for all of the magazines at the time so by him putting it th this out there he popularized it and a lot of people got results on it and I still know advocates of his system today and he did get this from earlier people and uh, that's a whole nother topic that's too many for me to cover in uh, this I just want to get the main figures who've influenced uh, publicly everyone and Mike really pushed other people's work into the mainstream and he did so successfully in the sense that he got thousands and thousands of people to do this stuff and a lot of them got good results doing it now I think a lot of the what he did was questionable but the point is he also repopularized in the 1980s one set training 
Then we reach the 1990s. You have none other than the famous Dorian Yates. Anyone who follows bodybuilding, and again, guys, I'm not preaching bodybuilding because I'm not actually a bodybuilding fan. I don't really keep up with the trends in this performing art. But you have Dorian Yates. The guy won the Mr. Olympia something like, what, six, seven, eight times? He won it repeatedly. Uh, I'm not even sure the exact number at this point. But he advocated one work set taken to failure. Now, he also, like the others, did warm-up sets. So this is where we get into these arguments. People are doing warm-up sets, but then they're doing that one final set to failure. He got absolutely enormous doing it. He was the most massive bodybuilder of his time, uh, one of the most freakish bodybuilders of his time because he got absurdly lean on top of it for a guy his size. That was kind of unheard of in that era also. But he advocated this one-set type system, again, went on to coach tons of people, and tons of other people followed what he advocated and they got results. I'm not saying it's the best way to train, but people got results doing it. It worked. All right, a few years pass, it falls back out of vogue, and then Kapow, Dante Trudel comes on the scene with this article he wrote, I believe, in around 2001 called Cycling for Pennies. And this is when the internet was growing. The internet was spreading. All these underground forums were around uh, promoting all this training stuff, steroids, everything else. Dante wrote a book, and he detailed a little bit about cycling and how to use almost no money to get the uh, results people wanted from various anabolics and things. But then he wrote wrote a really long training and nutrition guide. And in that training guide, he wrote a system of training that had people in the gym, something like three days a week only, working out less than 45 minutes and doing one work set with rest pause at the end to finish out the set to take it beyond failure. He advocated this. Thousands of young men took his advice, followed it, and they got pretty damn big. I saw a lot of guys years ago running this system and getting results. A lot of them followed it to the letter, some modified it, but people swore by it for several years. It became the big new thing, his one set rest pause training, and guys got really big doing it. And love or hate his system, people got results doing Dante Trudel, a.k.a. dog craps, cycling for pennies. And it worked, and a lot of them didn't even incorporate uh, all of the drug ideas. There were some natty guys who were doing it successfully as well. So it, it clearly worked. It's got flaws in the system, but it worked. People got results doing it. And then that fell out of vogue for a few years, and on the scene comes Martin Bergen, who was, I believe, a Swedish underwear model or fitness model of some type. He started this whole... Thing called lean gains, this system of intermittent fasting to get shredded and a minimalist style training. And I believe he started this in 2011. And one of his most interesting articles was called Fuck Around Itis, which is actually a good read. He talked about people sitting around wasting their time in the gym doing useless stuff. Now, Martin advocated the idea that if you could get as strong as possible for reps for rec work on the squat, the bench press, the deadlift, and the weighted chin up that you would get as big as you needed to get without drugs that you would get as big as you possibly could as long as you got strong on all of those because a big muscle is a strong muscle and a strong muscle is a big muscle and that is actually a scientifically verifiable fact the stronger you get in any given muscle the bigger it will get in absolute in proportion to there is a neurological component to strength there is a motor unit function of strength but size does equal strength. It's just that it varies from one person to another as to how much it does, which is why you see differences there. But yeah, if you get stronger, you're gonna get bigger. If you get bigger, you're gonna get stronger. It's just the nature of the beast. It has to do with the leverages in a muscle. It's unavoidable. So Martin advocated this, but the thing is, how did he advocate people do this? He wanted people to focus on recovery because the thing is he had people doing intermittent fasting. So they were going only eating sometimes four to eight hours a day, depending on how they were doing the system, and they were fasted the rest of the time. Recovery became a big deal. People couldn't be coming in and training very large volumes of training and follow his eating approach, and his eating approach allowed people to really restrict calories enough to get really lean. Now, I don't necessarily advocate this, but this system worked. He got tons of guys into really ridiculous shape doing this, and again, not saying that I think people should be that lean, but the point is, it worked. And how did he have people doing it? Reverse pyramid training with really one set. He would have people come in and say on their deadlift, 
they would build up to whatever it is, a five or six rep max or whatever. As soon as they hit muscle failure, they would strip the weight down with no break and do another set to failure, then strip the weight down and do like another set to failure. So basically a drop set, a double drop set with heavy weight, one work set. And he had them do a little accessories here and there, but the main focus was on getting as strong as they could on this initial work set with the back off work in the reverse pyramid on the squat the deadlift, the bench press, and the weighted chin-up. And Martin himself was, uh, again, this ripped, jacked guy wasn't necessarily massive, but he clearly looked the part. He clearly looks the part of a fitness guru. And again, the guy is a model. So this stuff has been around a really long time time as you guys can see has become popular over and over and over because what ends up happening a lot of people get tired of high volume training it gets boring most people don't want to live their life in the gym maybe people who make their living off of this maybe people who are really competitive in something and it becomes their life and it becomes their obsession but the vast majority of people out there don't want to spend five hours a week in the gym lifting weights they don't it gets boring to people and even people who love doing it for a couple years maybe even three years four years eventually get burned out on it and they don't want to do it and so having systems like this in place gives people an alternative to make good gains continue to make progress without having to live in the gym and obsess over it and tap into the recovery that they might need to deal with day-to-day -day stresses in their normal lives. So there's absolutely a big market for this style of training. Plenty of people have used variations of it over the years uh, very successfully. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.